Hi everyone, this is Duke with a quick video on how to use QuickTune in terms of uh, actually using it. Okay, we talked about how it works a little bit in the last video. We went over some parts of the assignment here. Now we're going to actually set it up on our copter and fly it and look at the log afterwards. So we're going to go over to the QuickTune uh, README type file page here in, in, uh, on, on GitHub and I'm going to walk through the operation of the script itself. So down here in this section. Okay. So if you haven't yet done this, you would want to set up harmonic notch filter on your copter, which you should have already done in class. Okay. The next section uh, deals with enabling scripting on your copter. So we need to um, basically get the script itself, put it on our aircraft and enable scripting to, so we can actually use the script. Okay. If you haven't downloaded the script yet, at this point you want to go back and grab it. Let's see if you told the actual Lua script here. You would download that to your computer. Okay, and then you jump back over to the README file. All right. Uh, then we'll, we'll want to set SCR enable to one. Okay. Now I, I thought you had to set SCR enable to one to get this directory to be available, so that's how I'm gonna do it. Um, you could try to find the directory, I guess, before you set it, it to enable, but I, I thought doing this enable parameter would actually create this directory. So I'm not sure why it's written that way, but we'll go ahead and follow the steps that, that I've tried and no work. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay. So let's go over here to our SCR okay, enable parameter. I'm connected to my simulated copter here. You connected to your real copter, of course. Set SCR enable to one. Okay. Lewis scripts, write parameters, and then you're going to reboot your copter. Okay. Once you've rebooted your copter, I'm not going to reboot this one because it's a simulated copter. Once you rebooted your copter, okay, you can go over to the uh, Mav FTP, okay, here, and we'll go to our plus, go into scripts, and you can cl right click and say upload, and then you'll pick your file, okay, and you'll upload that script you just downloaded a second ago from the web, VTOL QuickTune, QuickTune Lua. Okay. Once that's on there, Okay, um, load it in, in, into your basically flight controller to the SD card. Okay, excuse me, I would reboot again. And then you go into the parameter, loose, parameter list and search for quick. Okay, here's all of our quick tune parameters here. So if we go back to the web here, it says make sure you set quick enable to one. Okay, so we quick enable here, it's set to one, enabled, right parameters. Okay. Then we'll set up a three position switch. Okay, That's up to you on your radio to set it up first. So just like you set up an arming switch or a flight mode switch, you want to set up another three position switch on your radio. Uh, I'm going to just use the example here. I'm going to have this three position switch control channel six. Okay, That should work great. Um, if you need help with this part, you can of course ask me. I'm not going to show how to set up a switch in Edge TX in this video but um, you want to set that up on your radio side so you have a, a physical switch that controls channel six okay and then you'll go in you'll t go into the parameters in uh, mission planner and say rc6 option equals 300 if you're using channel six of course if you're using a different channel then you'd put that number in there we'll go back into mission planner we'll say rc6 okay option is set to 300 perfect right parameters okay so now uh, we, we can control the script being run with the physical switch. Okay. We don't need to worry about this part right now. We're just using one script on the aircraft. We don't, we don't need to, we're just going to be scripting one. So we'll set it to 300. Okay. We're then going to take off, put the vehicle into Q loiter or loiter since we're using a quadcopter okay. and have it in a nice hover and low wind. And we will then take that channel six switch and move it to the middle position. Okay, you can do this with a two position switch. I'm not gonna go over that in this video. It's pretty similar, but um, we're gonna use a three position switch. Oops. So then we're going to move that switch to the middle position. Okay, that will start the tuning working and we'll see those text messages appear in Mission Planner's messages section. Uh, and then we're gonna let that process run through. You'll see some of these values in the messages section. Okay. Once it's done, it will see tuning done. We're going to then move the switch to the high position to save the tune. Okay. We went over some other notes about what happens if you land it before you switch to high or if you move it out of the middle and stuff in the other video, so I'm not going to go over that right now. Let's go back over to Mission Planner. Go to our main data page here. 
Okay. Now we're going to go uh, to messages so we can see the messages come through as we're doing the click tune. So again, we need to um, arm the aircraft, get it up to a decent altitude. Doesn't need to be super high or anything, but you don't want it too low. So we'll say five meters or so. And then we're going to put the channel six switch into the middle position to start the quick tune. Okay, I have my physical transmitter connected to the uh, computer as a joystick. Uh, in this case, so we're going to enable joystick. Okay, that should be working now. So I should be able to arm the aircraft. Okay, we're going to throttle up and climb to the altitude about five meters or maybe around there. It's hard to control the altitude in the sim because there's not really a good reference visually. That looks good, about seven meters. Okay, we'll go to messages here. I'm going to engage that script by putting the channel six switch into the middle position. So let's go right there. Okay. You'll see these messages here pop up as well as the ones here. So it's doing roll D in this case first. And you can see it's it's increasing the value. So point zero point zero zero three four, four zero, four eight, five seven. Okay. Now it's done with D. Kind of like we read in the other video, it'll ramp up the value until it starts to oscillate and then bring it back down a little bit. And this goes pretty fast overall. Uh, for roll and pitch at least. And I mean overall it's Still a very quick process, but yaw does take a little bit longer sometimes. Okay. So we have roll D, roll P, pitch D. Now we're doing pitch P. Okay, from our discussions in class, we talked about P, I, and D as tuning values. And so it's tuning some of those values right now. Okay, pitch is done. All right. Okay. Done. So tuning is done. Now mine went a little bit faster this time because I've already quick tuned this simulated copter a couple times. Yours may take a little bit longer, especially in real life with wind and stuff like that. But once our tuning is done, okay. Then what do we do? We don't land yet. If we want to save the values, we need to move the switch high before we land. So we're going to move channel six high. Okay. And we get a tuning saved there. All right. And now we can land the vehicle. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just RTL the vehicle so I can talk while this is going. Okay. My channel six switch is still high. So it saved all those values. All right, so uh, once the copter lands, it'll take a second here to land, but you can go ahead and, and get the log from the aircraft. Okay, so if we go back over here, one of the things I ask you for is to get the data flash log from the flight where you did the quick tune. Okay, and then you want to screenshot that log in a log viewer. Okay, so once the aircraft lands, you'll go over and you'll go data flash log, so download the log. The most recent one, the one you just flew, you want to download that one. Okay, I'm not going to actually do it right now because I already have a log I'm going to show you, but you would download the log from the QuickTune flight. You can then take it into Mission Planner or a web viewer like this. Okay, and here I've loaded the log from my QuickTune flight, and I've kind of zoomed in on a specific area. I'm going to show you how I did this here in just a second. Let me actually get rid of this for just a second. There we go. Okay, so in the plot area here, I just decided to plot RCN channel 3, which is my throttle. And then I plotted RCN channel six, which is the switch I use to engage quick tune. So I go down here, we just go to RC three and six, okay? And that kind of helped me see where I throttled up to take off and let the aircraft settle a little bit into its nice kind of easy hover, I guess we could say. And then channel six here, the orange engage is when I engage quick tune to first the middle position and then the higher position, okay? So, um, this would be a great way to see the channels, but also we want to grab over here and grab our messages. Okay, this will show us the data flash log messages kind of played back as we uh, scrub through the log. So if I go over here and start scrubbing through, we'll see all those messages from the log. And you can see here it says tuning, starting tune, and then it starts the roll tune. And as I scrub along further, it'll say starting pitch tune. Okay. Uh, pitch D, starting yaw tune, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and then when I get over here to channel six, we have tuning saved, right? 
So for the assignment, you'd say, take a screenshot of this and say, look, Duke, here's channel six. My QuickTune was on six. Here's the log messages. So you can see what's happening. Um, here's a graphical representation of the log so that, you know, I know that you know which log you're actually looking at is the correct log and you checked it before you submitted it and all that kind of stuff. All right. So that is the data flash log with a screenshot showing me where you did QuickTune. Okay. And then you also want to get the after screenshot of Mission Planner's extended tuning page. Okay. So if we go to Mission Planner and go to, uh, let's see, config, okay. the extended tuning page here, right? You want to have a screenshot of this from before you do the quick tune and a screenshot of this from after you do the quick tune. That way we can see these P, I, and D values have changed as a result of the tune. And that's one other way to show that you save the quick tune values. All right. Okay. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Uh, if you're trying to use quick tune to get things going on your copter, hopefully this helps. And hopefully this helps explain the assignment as well. Thanks.